Now, one of the most important moments from the NBA's bubble was when the Milwaukee Bucks decided to walk out of their playoff game against the Orlando Magic in protest of the Jacob Blake shooting. Following the Bucks' lead, other teams joined in boycotting all across sports. Now, Bucks guard Kyle Korver spoke at his alma mater, Creighton University, on Sunday, and he described the emotional scene in the locker room and gave some details on how the Bucks came to their decision. Korver started by describing Bucks assistant coach Darvin Ham's initial reaction. Take a listen. One of our one of our coaches, um, Darvin Ham. He, I'm sure he'd be fine with me telling the story, but. He's got two sons that are in their 20s who they live in Milwaukee, right? He's thinking about them. He's, he's in tears and he, he came in and he said something like, it's kids out on the streets. It's really emotional. And went into this little, the locker rooms were kind of weird, but there's like a little coaches thing that had been set up and like just took the whole thing down. Everyone's jumped up, and everyone's already on edge, and everyone's already in bad headspace. And I just sat there in my chair with tears running down my face. And I'm looking at my jersey that says Black Lives Matter. And I'm, I'm just like, what are we doing? Mm. And um, so uh, we had one teammate, George Hill, uh, decided that he wasn't going to play. And uh, Sterling Brown on our team, who has his own case going on in Milwaukee right now, it's, it's still open. He said, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a George. And they kind of, he stood up and he's like, you guys don't have to do this if you don't want to. Me and George are going to sit out tonight. And we all just sat there and we're like, we're all with you. Right? We're with you. And there was like 13 minutes on the clock. Like, you know, this was, this was happening in real time. And, um, we just kind of sat there and let the, t the clock run out. And we're like, we know, we don't know exactly what the future holds. We're not sure exactly what our plan is going for, but we're doing the right thing. This is the right thing. Very powerful. This is the right thing. Matt, you were with the Clippers when the Donald Sterling tapes were released. Faced a similar situation. You guys were getting ready for a playoff game. You did end up playing that night, although we remember the demonstration in the middle of the court. You had a mix of races on that team, just like Kyle is describing. Can you describe the emotions you were feeling and, and what similarities as you listen to Kyle there? Kind of what does that bring up and evoke for you? It's just a tough situation because you want to do what's right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you want to do what's right for not only yourself, your family, your team, your community. And I think the fact that their situation was, to me, on a much bigger scale, obviously, um, you know, we took care of Donald Sterling, but this is a, something that's happening continuously in our sure. society. And it happened, I think it was obviously, like you said, it was countdown. Do we go out and play? Do we not? I think if that was thrown on our plate, we possibly would have did the same thing as them. So I applauded these guys for what they did. Um, some people say they gave the power away. Um, going right back, but to me, I think you just showed your power. You know, they started, and we know we spoke on this for yeah. a whole month. The domino effect across sports uh, in general, um, the, the, the effect they made. So I hope we continue to carry this energy into the polls and, and realize that that's going to be the first step of hopefully getting some kind of change. Zach, yeah, I, I, I said this at at the time. You know, um, obviously incredibly moving from Kyle, but. The Bucks took, uh, there were some people in Orlando who were uh, mildly irritated that the Bucks kind of acted unilaterally and without running it by anybody. And I said this at the time, I'm glad they did that because it was, I mean, clearly you could see how genuine and, and agonizing it was for them. But, you know, I, Matt just talked about the widespread domino effect that happened. I don't know that that kind of impact happens if they say, you know, let's go talk about it in a committee with right. all the other teams that yep. are here and discuss it and what the plan of action is. Sometimes you just need to act. Sometimes you just need to go. And they, they went because it felt right to them. And the impact that that decision had and the suddenness of it and the fact that it was unexpected and unrehearsed, I think was an important part of why we're still talking about it now. And I think it was part of why it was so effective. I, I've heard the same things you have, Matt, about like, oh, they, get, they just went right back to playing. What did they really accomplish? This wasn't some big, large campaign to accomplish something because the thing you really want to accomplish is just stop killing innocent, right. unarmed 
black people in right. this country, and that was not going to get solved by a basketball game being played or not played, if only it were that easy. What they wanted to do is say, we cannot function like this right now. A and they showed that. And the fact that it was so genuine and spontaneous, to me, spoke to that. And it didn't have to be about what are you doing two days from now or what are you demanding. It was like, I, in the we moment. cannot do this. We right. just I cannot get up and go play a basketball game right now. A and the fact that that resonated with so many more athletes around so many other sports, that was the effectiveness. And it did obviously get so many people's attention. I think one people seem to forget so much is, you know, once you get to this top level, everyone is very talented. It's a mental capacity which allows you to excel or, 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 or fall off the map. And there was just so much going on in the world at this time for these guys to be in a bubble, taken away from their kids, their family, and then also look to to change the world. Like you said, Rachel, it's never going to be as simple as if we stop playing, they're going to stop killing us. It's not that. But there's so, we say 90% of the game is mental. And mm -hmm. if your mental state is not exactly on what you have to do and say, oh, your baby, you should be able to focus. No, we're, we're human beings. So if you can't focus, obviously we can't focus either. So I think they did a great thing, spur of the moment. You, you try to spread it around and ask too many, get too many opinions. I'm glad they did what they did they flex their power like I said I hope we understand that it. it doesn't just stop November 3rd this is a movement they need to carry on from here on out absolutely and the league is talking to the Players Association about how they want to move forward with that it is the largest billion dollar corporation in America that made the most public statement on this in the last six months and they have to decide where to go forward from here